This video is an introduction to design elements and principles for National 4 and National 5 graphic communication. Good graphic design relies on the graphic designer understanding what makes a layout work. The graphic designer breaks the layout down into smaller parts and works with each part in turn. These smaller parts are called design elements and design principles. You need to understand design elements and design principles and be able to write about them in the course exam. You will also be expected to use them in promotional layouts that you design yourself. You should be familiar with the list below. Design elements. Design elements will be line, shape and colour. Design principles will be alignment, dominance or emphasis, unity, contrast, depth and balance. Don't think of the elements and principles in isolation. Design elements are the building blocks and normally physical items on the page. These create the design principles. The best way to examine this is to look at some examples of each. So let's start with line. Compare the two layouts shown below for the blue stick and discuss which looks better and why. So when we look at the two of them, we can see the right hand layout is the same as the left, but with two horizontal lines added. These bring a number of benefits to the layout. The white lines pass through and link both sides of the layout together. So instead of it looking like it's two separate items, now it links the two of them together. This is what's called unity. The top line underlines and emphasises the product name, blue stick. The bottom line passes behind the memory stick, which creates depth. It pushes the memory stick forward. The lower line separates the space at the foot of the slogan. So the supporting our customers is separated from the rest of the article. Positioning the lines at the top and the bottom of the layout connect the two areas together, creating unity. And lastly, the lines are positioned carefully to create strong alignment. This helps to organise and give structure to the layout. So straight away, you can see just by looking at one design element of line, we can actually incorporate a number of design principles into the page. So these design principles being unity, emphasis, depth, alignment, all of these things are just created by adding two lines. So when we talk about alignment, if you look at the line which goes below the blue stick heading, you see that it finishes in line with the right hand edge of the word stick. And you can actually see that the lower line is perfectly in line with the left hand edge of the word blue. Balance. Understanding balance is simple. Look at the two layouts for a fruit juice shown below and discuss which looks better and why. The above layout is cluttered and looks disorganised. The content is too spread out and there are too many different areas to look at and read. The water bottle is in the centre of the page. Where do your eyes go to next? You don't really know, but with us being English, we tend to uh, read from left to right. So your eyes will probably jump to the left and read some of the text and then jump to the right because the big tap text says contact us and then your eyes will jump back and forth between the two of them not really knowing where to go. Moving the bottle off centre creates asymmetry. This is a more eye-catching design. Text is confined to the top and right of the layout. It flows and is easy to read. In this case the bottle is the focal point your eyes automatically go to the right because that's the larger space and you can read all of the text. In most layouts, there's a rectangular space to fill. 
When the product is placed in the middle of the layout, it creates a symmetrical layout, but leaves two tricky areas on either side to fill. Your eyes don't know where to go left or right or bounce back and forth between them. When the main item is offset, it creates an asymmetrical layout, leaving a single space which is easier to fill. Rule of thirds. When a layout space is divided into nine equal rectangles, four lines dividing the space provide focal points. Placing important features on or close to a line can, can create a more visually pleasing layout. Impact points where the lines cross are key areas to locate important features. This is the finished layout for the water bottle. The layout has been fine tuned. The bottle has been scaled up to create dominance because it's the largest item on the page. The product name has been shrunk to fit in the space on the right and the fruit juice text has been sized and aligned. There's a lot more going on in this page, a lot of alignment where we have the whole um, right hand edge of uh, motivate, fruit juice, the body text, refresh are all aligned down that right hand edge. We have got some depth getting created by the lines going behind the water bottle, the lines going behind the motivate fruit juice and a lot going on but it, it makes it a very, very good layout. Alignment. Good alignment helps improve the structure of a layout. It makes a page feel organised and easy to follow. It contributes to neatness and sharpness. The example above shows an example of a badly aligned layout. At first, when you look at it, you probably think it's not too bad, but when you actually start to add grid lines or guidelines where all the edges of all the different parts take place, you can actually see the layout is poorly aligned and looks untidy. You can see this when the guidelines are added, the lack of alignment that is taking place. By editing this, here you can see using a grid, guidelines and the snap feature when setting up a layout. This layout is now accurately aligned. The result is a much more pleasing layout that looks and feels organised and is easier to follow. To use alignment, look for edges that can be aligned and do it accurately. Strong alignment creates organised, structured and easy to follow layouts. Colour. Using colour creatively can make an enormous difference to the impact of a layout. It is important to consider colour combinations in a layout, not just individual colours. It is how colours work together that makes a difference. Used well, colour combination can make a product stand out, give a layout visual impact, unify a layout, tying it together, connect with a target audience or target market, and suggest a mood. The following slides demonstrate how colour can be used to improve a layout. The layout is, is to promote a chaise long. The lounger has three colours, lilac, purple and pale brown. These colours are fixed, they will not change. The colours, the colours chosen for the rest of the layout must work with those three colours. This is the first layout. What do you think of it? Do you think it looks good? Do you think it looks bad? This is the sort of thing that we get from pupils when they haven't done any work on colour theory or layout. When colours don't work. This, screen, this scheme includes too many colours, 11 in total. They work against each other and the image of the lounger gets lost in the rainbow of colours. There is no unity or harmony and contrast is conflicting. To be quite honest, this is just somebody who doesn't have a clue about colour and has just thrown everything at the page. This colour scheme includes only the colours that already appear on the lounger, plus one other. 
four in total. Because the same colours appear in each of the three areas, they help to unify the layout, to tie everything together. The colours don't fight with each other, they harmonise the layout and support the relaxed mood of the product. So thinking back to your colour theory down at the start of third year, harmony, all of these colours work well together. This third colour scheme uses green on all three flash bars. This creates contrast with the purple on the lounger. It makes the purple stand out. The circle and the big splash design text use the same purple as the lounger. Purple becomes the accent colour. It stands out and ties the three parts of the layout together. Contrast. Contrast is about differences and especially opposites. Opposites like black and white, vertical and horizontal, or circles and squares, stand out when they are used together in a layout. They become eye-catching and can help give a layout visual impact. In this example here, we have a slab chair. This promotional layout lacks contrast. The chair images are all the same size, the fonts in, are in the same font uh, type and size and the colours harmonise. Nothing stands out or catches the eye. While the alignment is strong, it lacks visual impact. Here it has been fine-tuned in the second layout and improves it, especially its visual impact. The key changes are related to contrast, creating differences throughout the layout. The 2D chairs have been shrunk and the 3D one scaled up, creating contrast in size. The large size of type used on the title contrasts with the smaller text used in the rest of the page. The background colour creates contrast with the blue of the chair. The circle is added to contrast with the rectangular shape in the majority of the layout. Depth. Creating the illustration of depth on a 2D page is an important way to give the layout more visual impact. It is easily done using one of the following methods. Here in the top, we've got a pen. Just using an, an image, 2D image, it makes it look like it's floating. If we place a line behind the box, it gives that image of depth. Placing a colour fill or flash bar behind the image also creates depth if the image breaks out of the colour fill. Placing text behind the image can create depth. Placing other images behind the main image can create depth. Adding a drop shadow to the image can create depth, or using all of the above to try and help create a page which has got great amount of depth to it. Unity, repetition and harmony, making connections. Layouts are often made up of many different parts or items. It is important to connect them together in some way. This page looks at some methods of this. In the top left, we have the torch, which is linked to the, the writing behind it, overlapping an image onto text and create unity. It makes a physical connection between the text and the image. Moving to the right, lines can do the same. Placing the line behind the image connects and unifies the combination. Using a colour fill behind the two items can connect them. The text and torch are connected by the blue, bar, by the blue flash bar. Repeating colours in different parts of the layout, repetition, can tie items together. You can use the eyedropper tool in Serif uh, Page Plus to do this. Repeating features in separate positions can create unity. The double lines tell the eye that this is a unified layout. 
the larger item includes all of the above. We're looking at color to create unity. We're looking at flash bars to link things together. We're looking at repeating different objects. Dominance and emphasis. Graphic layouts are often scanned quickly by the reader. If the layout is bland or without a focal point, it may not hold the reader's attention long enough to get its message across. Your layouts will include graphics and text. The text may be split into two or three separate parts, a title, a heading, and a body text, plus possible further information. These contents need to be arranged to create a strong focal point. Normally, this is the main graphic or photograph on the page. There should be an order of dominance in the layout that leads the reader. The main graphic or picture should dominate the layout. The title, heading or product name should be next. The less important items should be grouped and positioned carefully to support this order of importance. Dominance and emphasis are related elements. Dominance occurs when one item stands out more than others, it dominates the layout. Emphasis happens when an item is made more eye-catching. The layout above has been aligned carefully, but it lacks visual impact. The space is filled, but there is no focal point. The images are too similar in size and are spread out around the layout. The product name does its job, but lacks impact. The layout above has been improved by creating a focal point by enlarging an image and positioning it carefully, grouping smaller images and scaling them down to make the focal point more dominant, changing the font to create contrast and using an underline to add emphasis. Shape. The rectangle is the predominant shape in graphic layouts. This is because computer screens and magazine pages are rectangular. Photographs and columns of text are also rectangular. Using other shapes in a layout can help introduce contrast and create visual impact. In the top left, the layout above has images in frames or boxes. The result is a formal and structured layout based on a rectangular shape. The layout is bland, it lacks contrast and variety. Top right. Cropping the main image introduces another shape. This makes it less formal and more contemporary, but the layout is still too bland. The text looks clumsy. Bottom left. All the images have been fully cropped in this third version. Asymmetrical shapes have been used in place of frames and the text is wrapped around the main image. The result is a modern, informal feel that complements the lamp. The fourth layout uses another rectangle and softer ellipse shapes. It shows how shape can be used to create a different feel. The circles on the left uh, repeat the soft shapes and create unity and rhythm. That is the end of the Design Lights and Principles presentation. As said in the first slide, sometimes you will have to um, create your own layouts and you will be expected to use some of the Design Lights and Principles when creating these. Also, you'll be expected to recognise Design Lights and Principles in published pages. These are the sort of things that you would get in an exam. Once you've finished watching this video, open up the, the homework and show my homework on design elements and principles and attempt as many of the questions as possible.